Okay, I'm here at Five Star Engines and Ed is going to cover some oiling, part one, building a small block Chevy with performance. So this is going to be fun. Ed, what do we have here? What's... Uh, we have a Chevrolet motor. We're going to put it in a stock car. That would be a dirt track car. Okay. And uh, a little roundy round racing. And I built several of those over the years. And uh, it's nothing that, I, there's no secrets about it, but it's just some of the things that we do to make our motor maybe not as fast as anybody else's, but they might last longer. Okay. If you last longer in a race and finish the race, well, that's, that's a good part. Yeah, durability is a big deal, that's isn't it? It's a big deal, yeah. Okay, so. So we built some motors over the years, bigger motors, and I've had some small block Chevy motors, 434 cubic inches, mm -hmm. and that would be raced on a, a mile track. Okay. So a three eighths track, and, and we did our 377 motors, that would be a a 400 cubic inch with a 350 crank. Okay. And that would be a big bore short stroke type thing. And that was good for a, some 3 8 tracks, but we our favorite probably is the 383 stroke of motor. Okay, what do you like about the 383 in particular? Well, it's uh, just a stroke and, and we can put a longer rod set, a six inch rod. Anytime you make the rods longer, it takes the, the, the uh, scuff off the skirts of the piston. It okay. don't push the piston sideways. So ah. The longer the rod, the piston would just go straight up and down instead of cocking sideways. I see. And that's a big deal. Right. Especially in race cars and, and where you're holding 6,000, 7,000 RPMs. And we've had some of our racers that uh, uh, some of the guys came here with a lot of money. And so we had to spend a little bit more money to keep up with them. <laughs> so we had to run 8,000 uh, RPMs. And wow. That wasn't too bad to do. We learned a few things about that. but. Uh, this particular motor here, the main thing has been oiling. I spend a couple, three hours on this motor just to do a machine and, and uh, it's got nothing, very little to do with it, but going fast. It's just making it live longer. Okay, so some, do we want to jump yeah. off on that point yeah, right now? Let's motor, talk yeah. about oiling Yeah, on we can this look motor. a little bit. This, uh, so anyways, we would uh, basically start out by picking a good motor. Yeah. And we want this cam here, this low area here to be the same all the way around. Okay. And not over to one side. You're talking about the casting at that the point, casting, right? The casting, yeah. Okay. If it's cast over to one side, that means that this cylinder wall is maybe thin and these over here thick. Oh, Because the whole okay. thing is shifted on that casting. And this is a good indication of this circle around here that's the same all the way around. Interesting, okay. So then we always start here, we, we tap these holes and we always tap them with plugs in them. They had freeze plugs in them, just drove in and sometimes they fall out. Okay. So then, so that's part of oiling. And then when we put our cam bearings in, we always put the, the, the oil hole down here because the cam rotates this way. And the oil comes out here and it picks up the oil where it's under pressure as the engine rotates this way around. I see. So see if it was up here, the more the cam bearing wears, it would go down, down further, and this gap would be bigger and bigger and bigger. Wow, so okay, just, so you're kind of thinking ahead yeah, as the engine is wearing That's the way they're supposed to be put in. Okay. And a lot of people, this this little uh, skit we're doing here, it's not for the true engine builder, but it's the beginner. Okay. And he can pick out a few things like this he wants to do, and maybe he said he don't want to do those things. Right. That's quite all right. Sure, but we're and, at least... Uh, and, and even the some of the major engine builders, they might learn something here. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, they could, could think they might they learn might. something, yeah. So then, uh, get up the top. Then we've taken and deburred all this with a little grinder all the way around this edge, so we don't have any flakes going flaking off this machine shop work. Okay. And then we turn on and tap these holes in here, put these pipe in, because we don't want the oil. We want the oil to stay up in here and not go through these original get holes and fall on the crank. Oh, really? We don't want oil falling on the crank because it just turns more with. If it was in some 30 weight oil, it takes more horsepower to turn it. Okay, so it's a really a drag on the crank to have too much oil to push That's right. through. Okay, yeah, got it. There's a lot of oil up here. Okay. So we would put a head gasket on here and make sure this area right here is not casted through. The head gasket's got a hole here. Okay. And we want it to be sure that, that this casting didn't plug the hole. That's the oil returns from the head. Okay. So the oil returns from the head here. Then we're gonna go here. Now we want the oil, some of it to flow out in the front because it's not gonna go through the motor. It's gonna go out these holes in the front and go in the timing chain. 
this is all good. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So if you didn't put these in, it would more oil right would up. go down? All the way up to here. Okay. And this way, more oil is going straight to the, the timing front, chain up the front. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And these holes, look there, these are sometimes as small as a dime. Really? Here and here. Okay. It's very easy to take a, a grinder and just spend a couple of minutes and make these holes. They're as big as a mouse. A rat would almost go through that hole. Okay. So as you're going around the track, the oil goes to the back and all goes down that hole. Okay. And no, no restrictions at all. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so just so I don't misunderstand, it's okay for the oil to go through here yes. or to the timing, but yes, you don't want it going down to the crank. Down the crank. That's okay. Right. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So the oil goes down to this hole here. Yep. Then, uh, and, and again, we've tapped these and tapped the, the other holes. And on this one, we've turned around and cut the deck already. Okay. What we want it to be. Okay. And we've cut the bore. On this particular engine, it's a flat top motor. Kind of a spec motor. You can't do much to it, okay. supposedly. Okay. They say we can't do too much, but we don't tell them everything. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> we might run about maybe a four inch bore. We might run four inch, three thousandths bore clearance. Okay. And normally it's maybe a thousandth and a half or two, but we might start out right we're on the four. Okay. So let's go back to the oil then. Yeah. The oil's going to go down that hole. Yeah. So okay. now it's going to go down the in the engine. I'll turn the motor over here. Let's see where it's going. It's going to come out in this area right here. Come down here. Right. Okay. Then it's going to hit this flap. Okay. And then it's going to flow out over this and the crankshaft comes around the counterweight and hits it and throws it up the cylinder wall. Oh. Okay. So we're going to drill, drill this hole. Uh huh. This hole has never was there. Oh, that you put that hole there. Yes. The crank sets right here. Uh huh. And all the oil from that hole comes out and goes in here. Okay. And a little bit comes over the side. I see. Yeah. So that oil returns back through this hole. Okay. So again, and that's good on any motor. Okay. So again, that's still to keep not too much oil on the crank on the crank okay it returns on both ends of the pan okay yeah getting into the pan i got it okay so then we've taken a drill on this particular motor uh-huh we've taken a drill and it has a hole here that oils from the cambria up oils one rod bearing okay this hole here oils two rod bearings and this one holds two and this one holds two and the rear one only oils one right so we've drilled this out Larger than quarter inch. Okay, I see. All the way through here, without the can bearing, all the way in the oil galley. Okay. The drill bit's about this long. <laughs> right. So okay. once we drill these, I'll get the bearings for you. Okay. This is a normal bearing. Yep. I haven't did this. It has a small hole in it. Yep. For the, for the oil. Uh-huh. And that's going to go in that hole. Sure. And we don't want this hole to be... A big hole and a small bearing hole, right? Because so, the oil is going to push the bearing up on the crank. Ah, right, right. Yeah. It should so match you have, the size. Yes. Okay. This hole here should be bigger than that one. I see. Okay. So we've taken these bearings and we drill them on the back side with a drill. Okay. So we don't want to drill the other side because it could mess up the bearing. So we've drilled these bigger than that hole there. Just ever so slightly bigger. See how big it is? It's as big as that hole. Right. Compared to the hole in this bearing. Wow. That's a huge difference. A huge difference. Some people may say, well, that's going to, you want every oil pressure. Don't worry. The oil pump, a small block Chevy, usually is big enough for two engines. <laughs> we never considered putting a 454 oil pump in a small block Chevy. Really? Okay. Yeah, that would be dump way too much oil. Okay. Then you can't control it. Now you get so, it. Yeah, if you had a terrible oil pump, that might be a point, but not in this case. Yeah, not this case. Okay, yet. I got you. So we've got these all drilled. Uh huh. When we did this, we chamfered this hole right here with the yellow mark. Yeah. We made it a little bigger, like porting it out. Uh huh. Instead of being sharp. Right. That's where the oil goes in the filter and goes through this hole and comes out here and oils the rest of the motor. I see. The one that comes out of here uh -huh. goes in this filter here. This is a foil filter adapter. We definitely would put it over here so it's more room in he, around this hole. I and put this thing over here right in this way. Oh. Kind of plug it up. So this, this is the correct way to put it in here. Okay. 
then these have a valve in here, right? Spring-loaded valve. So maybe a certain percent of the oil goes through the filter. The rest of it goes in the motor. Okay. So we're going to plug this off. Uh-huh. Put a plug in it. Okay. You can buy this made with the plug in it and put this in it. So 100% of the oil goes through the filter. Okay. Yes. Now you're making sure, yeah, all of it, all of it is getting filtered. It, instead of only 20%. Sure. That's great. Yeah. Okay. And we have a little cutter. We, after we run a motor, we cut the filter apart. Yep. Take, take the paper out and spread it out. Uh -huh. Get a magnet and go through the debris. Okay. See what's aluminum and what's steel, if there's anything at all. Okay. We know where we're at as far as Excellent. running the motor. Yeah, some people just look for glitter, but without the magnet, you don't know what it is, yeah, right? Yeah, you don't know what it is. Yeah. Okay. Here's the little device here. Uh huh. And I've drilled this, you piece of tell if you can see that or not. Yeah, I can. There's teeny holes in here and a teeny hole in the end of it here. Okay. Now, these are restrictions that we put in the back block, the okay. back of the motor, and we stick this oil going to a roller lifter, solid roller lifter, and a and a bigger race car motor. Okay. So it restricts the oil instead of flooding the roller lifters. They're not hydraulics. Okay. Only, and that floods the lifters. Is that because the engine was made originally for a hydraulic lifter? Yes. Okay. The holes are too big, yeah. I got it. Okay. And this just restricts the lifter area, not the rest of the motor. I see. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a, a little couple things on No, the, that's a great great point. Because I'm sure a lot of people will change from a hydraulic to a solid lifter, but not necessarily know to do that's that. That's right, yeah, they do, yeah. So then, this is a front cover. You can have an aluminum cover or a, a chrome cover. Okay. This particular one, we always grind a, a notch in the bottom. I see. And yep. that oils, lets the oil out of this. Other than that, you have a big reservoir okay. of oil around the seal. Uh-huh. And it won't drain the pan. Okay. It's a good way to stop that oil, front seal, from leaking. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Just a little secret there. Cut a little notch in that before you put the seal in. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. That's that a great, up. great yeah. idea. Yeah. At the same time, when we get ready to do a distributor, so again, oil is important. This is a regular Chevrolet distributor, HEI. Okay. So then, this is oil pressure from one side of the motor to the other one. Okay. That's the way it's made. Okay. So, this is might be 80 pounds oil pressure. Okay. So, when we get ready to do our distributors, if you spend a lot of money on a distributor like the HEI mm -hmm. or a MSD, yep. there'll be a little hole here drilled into this passage to oil this gear. Okay. But you All have right. to spend five or six hundred for a distributor. Oh. Yeah, really. It's a lot of money. Yeah, I see that. Sanderson Ford? Thanks, Neil. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so anyways, we turn around and take our distributor uh -huh. and cut a little notch in them with a hacksaw. Okay, a little angle see that? cut. Yeah, I do see that. Yeah. yeah. So this is oil pressure, and we have to cut it at an angle because the gears are cut angle, and the saw won't cut the gears. So we cut a little angle there. Okay. And that's a little seepage of squirts oil out on this gear. Just a little bit, right? Yeah, just a little bit, but I don't have anything to do with oil pressure. Right. Because it leaks everywhere. Oil leaks everywhere, so you don't. Yeah. Whatever, it's one big leak. <laughs> so, one big leak. Okay. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Sometimes on our distributor, uh -huh. if we have a bigger camshaft and a lot of valve springs, uh -huh. then we'll change that distributor gear to a brass one. Okay, and that's quieter, right? No. No? It actually will ruin this brass gear. Oh, really? Yes. Instead of ruining the cam. Oh, it's a like a wear gear. item that way. That's right. I we see. We can throw this away. Okay. So we're saying this wore out. Uh huh. Yeah. So, other than that, about 30 weight oil and okay. a 4,000 RPMs, probably take 25 or 30 horsepower to pull that oil pump. Right, wow. Yes. That's a lot. That's a lot. Even some of our secrets on our drag car, it's not a secret at all. We might put a accumulator under the seat of the dragster. Okay. And that accumulator will hold a couple quarts of oil under pressure, spring pressure. Okay. And we can drain the oil out of the motor. Really? On the last run. And that accumulator under the seat, that can full of spring loaded, uh -huh. will hold 60 pounds of oil pressure. Okay. The bypass valve. It'll hold it for like maybe five minutes. Okay. And that's enough to make a. Make a run? A, a run, yeah. Yeah. And, and the last run of the day. Uh huh. That's what we would do there. Sometimes. So, <laughs> okay. All right. This is over somewhere pistons. This has to be a flat top piston. That's kind of an expensive one for a 
for a little uh, dirt track car here, Tom. Yeah, okay. And then for the oil, we've ground the side of this oil. We've narrowed this rod. Okay. It says on here, minimum seven thousandths. Okay. Maximum, maybe a hundred. Oh, wow. Yes. I like to run 35, 40,000 side clearance. Okay. So the oil, if you kept the oil in this bearing, uh -huh. it's, done, it's doing its job as a bearing, but if it can't leave, then it will get hot. Okay. The oil will get so hot, it'll melt the bearing. Right. It'll melt the lead on See, the bearing. See, that's why I have to keep the oil moving to keep yes. it through to cool. We want it to go in the pan, cool off, mm -hmm. and come back around. I see. So yep. we ground these all off. At the same time, we turn on and ground this notch. Okay. This notch is on the top of the bearing. Yep. On both sides, the rod. Okay. And that squirts oil on the camshaft. Okay. On both right, sides. because the cam is down underneath. Right. On top. Well, is the cam. Right. So it's gotcha. going to squirt oil on the It's under the shaft. head, is what I meant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we used to do this years ago uh -huh. before I had a bell sand. We'd grind these notches in all four okay. just to get the oil out of them. Right. Okay. But I think I heard sometime when a good source told me NASCAR sometimes runs almost 100,000 side clearance on the rods. It would be a job building the motor. The center of the rod, they put shims in the in the wrist pins. Really? So this rod would be here. It's shimmed over a little bit in the center of the crank. Okay. And the other thing is that would be shimmed over perfectly in the center of the crank, even though it's got 100,000 side. Okay. But they run less than 1,000 rod clearance, but zero weight oil. Right. Right. That's the difference. Yeah. And I hear say that every time that they put the, uh, uh, went back to zero or 1,000th clearance of rod, yep. it took that vibration out oh. of all these eight rods banging on the crank at different times. If they were tight, they would sit there on the crank like an electric motor. Right. And the horsepower went right up. Wow. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. I never yeah, thought of that. Bit, that's, that's okay. Yeah. People think about that. <laughs> well, thanks for making me think, Ed. Yeah. So. That is awesome. Yeah. Well, that's a little bit on the oil. Okay. We got our rod bearings covered. We got our oil controlled. Right. Oil pumps are no secret there. No. It depends on the pan. Now, is there anything about how you assemble, how you assemble the motor that has anything to do with oil pressure? No, not really. Not really? Okay. No. It's just, just normal. the clearances. Yeah. Okay. And then on this crank, and this non common this is a 350 crankshaft, and I chose one that's 30 thousandths under. Okay. Under, ground 30 thousandths under, under stroke. Okay. So once you do that, NASCAR, so we'll go back to NASCAR, because they know a lot. Yeah, they do. I, we do. Uh huh. They went ahead and ground their throws down to, instead of inch and a quarter, maybe two inch. Okay. And one inch, 800 thousandths. And they put a Toyota rod in it. Okay. Now that's the difference, a little technical here. The difference between a small, small one eight hundred thousandths rod mm -hmm. is the speed between the crankshaft and the rod bearing is 6,000 RPMs. Okay. The two differences. That's like a small pulley and right. a big pulley. Right. That's a good way to describe it. Sure. Yeah. Wow. So that slows the bearings down. Okay. And they'll last a lot more. Uh, we, we've got we've got a pranker here. You know who that is? No, I don't. <laughs> the bearings are thicker? <laughs> let's the bearings start, are thicker. Let's start again because of that sneeze. Okay, yeah. All right. Well, we chose the 30, 30, 30 cranks, 30 under. And then the thickness of the bearing is thicker than a standard bearing. Oh, right. So therefore, we got a little bit more pound to it. A little bit more than, than beating up a thin bearing. Right. So the thicker the bearing, the lot better it lasts. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, the speed of the crankshaft between this this size and and the, and the bearing speed between the two pieces. Right. Yeah. So. Wow. Then we're done with pistons, and piston piston top ring lands. I'm going to get ready to grind it. Rings, okay. Gap the rings. We always have to, and on this particular time, we'll run probably thirty thousandths top ring, okay, and twenty-five the second ring end gap. And That's what's the, the purpose of a gap in the rings? They can't touch. Okay. They'll get hot. 
these motors get hot. If right. they touch, as soon as they touch, the ring breaks. Okay. And it comes apart. Right. Sometimes it takes the chunk right out of the piston. Wow. Something will break. Right. Okay. People spend it all the time with pistons, the chunk out of them. Okay. And they never gap the rings. Okay. So yeah. you're basically estimating how much gap it needs when it gets hot yes. so that it won't That's right. have a problem. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to start out with 30 on the top ring. Okay. And 25 on the second ring. Okay. And the oil ring is just a flimsy ring. Okay. Gotcha. This happens to be one of our race race car ring pistons. We'll talk about this for no reason. Sure. But there's one that's been cut down. This uh. happens to be for a junior fuel car. Okay. You see how many holes has been well, drilled in Wow. So it's got to be lightened you know, up by all that, right? Lightened up. So this motor would go about 10,000 RPMs. Really? It has some oil holes in here to return that oil behind oh. the ring. This ring here, the skinny ring, takes the oil off the cylinder walls. It has to have some place to return it. Okay, so those are there for oiling. Yes, wow. get the oil off the off the skirts. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then, okay. So when the when the piston's traveling down, it's capturing oil. That's right. And it's, and then it builds up, so it's got to escape somewhere. That's right. Okay, I see. Then this one happens to be where we have some total seal rings. Oh yeah, right. And the top ring is uh -huh. just a little rail. Right. Instead of a top ring like our normal rings are sure because of this we have holes in the top of the pistons okay what are those holes for compression goes in that hole okay it goes behind the ring and pushes the ring out but the oh. ring is a skinny oil ring wow and there's no drag on these pistons wow that's crazy we used to put a piston in the bore and oil it like it's supposed to be and get a spring tester and see how much it takes to pull the piston up and down. Okay. And that's important. Sure. On how many RPMs and horsepower. Right. So now these have these rings are, so the first and second ring are skinny little rings. Yep. I see yeah. that. Wow, those are thin. Right. Yeah. And this is all new technology in the last probably 15 years. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Wow. That's just some of the main yeah, things. that's and really cool. Well, the camshaft, we'll talk about that a little bit. Yeah, let's do that. We chose a camshaft, lift and duration, and overlap, and things like this. But once you choose a camshaft, people ask about degree in a cam. Uh huh. With all kinds of degree wheels and, and indicators and stuff. But once you buy the camshaft, you can't change it. Right. Right. You can't change where the intake valve opens compared to the exhaust valve. No, that's set when it's, yeah. it's set. Right. If you don't like it, buy another cam. Right. The only thing you can do in the camshaft, whatever you do, I talked to a cam grinder one time, quizzed him a little bit, and he quizzed me a little bit. He said, how old are you? I told him, he says, you know how to degree a camshaft? Yes. He says, why ask me any more questions? You either can advance it or you retard it. Yeah. You retard the camshaft a couple degrees. For every degree, it's 10 thousandths valve lift. Oh, okay. So you move the, the intakes ahead of the piston or the exhaust ahead of the piston, one or the other. You can either, on a cam, you can either advance or retard it. We're done. Wow. If you retard the camshaft, the car possibly would go 150 miles an hour. If you advance the camshaft, it would spin the wheels and only go 120 miles an hour. Okay, so it give you more torque but less high That's speed. Right. Okay. Yes. okay, less horsepower. So our charge, if the guy's going to go to the top of the track, I'll retard the cam. Don't go to the bottom. We're not drag racing. Right, right. Stay at the bottom and stay along the top. Sure. That totally makes sense. Now so you many say times that. the Ford trucks at Sanderson Ford down here, I've done so many for those in the early ages. The 460 Ford Dually, yeah. Ford Motor Company, had the camshaft almost six degrees retarded. And they want torque so for those not, things. It would not spin the wheels. Right. But it saved the drive shaft, the U-joints. But it wouldn't pull nothing. Right. It wouldn't pull a trailer for these farmers. Wow. So we took the cam out. To, didn't take the cam out, we took the lower gear off and put a 460 police car 
lower gear, put it back together again, and the dually would sit here and just spin the wheels and pull anything. We didn't care about that dually going 100 miles an hour. Right, right. Simple. Interesting, yeah. yeah. Simple I've, solution. I've done a lot for Santa's work. Before, right on. Over the years. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Well, that's okay. fantastic. Okay. Well, I guess this concludes part one, part right? One, yeah. This part one, mostly yeah. engine oiling. Yeah. Well, you're in building an engine. Ed, yeah. thank you so much for your time, and we'll Very look good. forward to seeing the next part of this. Very good. Thanks okay. for coming. Right on. I enjoyed this. Anyways, this crank then, we, we chose... We chose...